I want to talk about is why the world is in this state that it's in. And I don't care what evil forces exist out there. I don't care about your, you know, deep state or pedophile rings or whatever you're out there preaching. The Democrats, the Republicans, blah, blah, blah. I don't care what you're out there preaching is the reason this country is in the shape it is in. All of that is wrong. The reason this country is in the shape that it's in is because of God's people. God's people are tolerating evil. They're justifying evil. They're being, they're pacifying themselves towards evil. And because they are abiding evil, the Lord is letting evil abide. You understand? I'm not preaching a work salvation here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a nation. This nation. I'm talking about the people who are called by God's name. The people inside this nation who are called by God's name. Saved Christians. I'm talking about you. You are the problem. Because you're all a bunch of cowards and liars and pacifists and hippie, long-haired, whiny, you know, feminine creatures. I sit there and listen to you people and people don't, preachers don't preach like they used to preach. When men were men. They're, they're all a bunch of pacifists now. The, the saved people are out there preaching, don't judge, be tolerant, be loving, be Christ-like. It's not Christ-like to tolerate evil. Let me ask you something. What's worse, to sell inside a church or to be a filthy sodomite? What's worse? Huh? And Jesus, when he came across people that were selling, were, were making merchandise in his temple, Jesus was not a pansy. He made a whip out of bulrushes and beat them people out of his temple. Jesus was a man. He girded up his loins like a man. He acted like a man. He wasn't a pacifist pushover. Elijah. Look at Elijah. He didn't he didn't tolerate the false prophets and the and the wicked wicked people. He didn't say, "Oh, well, live and let live" or 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 agree to disagree. He killed the 400 prophets of Baal with his own hand. Samuel when he went to rebuke Saul Saul let the king live. He was supposed to kill the king. Samuel was not a pansy. Samuel, Samuel stood in the face of the king and told him he had messed up. He wasn't afraid. And then he went and killed the man that Saul was supposed to kill himself. David. David slew tens of thousands. He was a man. He girded up his loins like a man. He preached like a man. He acted like a man. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, you name them. They were men. John the Baptist stood to a king. Did he, did he, did he pansy foot around the king or did he look at the king and say, you shouldn't have your neighbor's wife. It's wickedness. Or you shouldn't have your brother's wife. It's wickedness. They were men. They judged people. They weren't quiet, pansy-footed little cowards that lived and let live 
like the Christians are today. They didn't tolerate false doctrines, lies, sodomy, those types of things. They stood up. They didn't even tolerate adultery, much less the even more vile of things. But nowadays these Christians are like, judge not, judge not, don't be judgmental. Yeah, Jesus said the words, judge not. That's it. I guess that's that settled the matter. No, he kept talking. He said that ye be not judged. For with what measure ye meet, it will be measured unto you. That means if you're an adulterer and you judge adulterers, then whatever judgment you make to adulterers will be measured to you. If you're a fornicator and you judge fornicators, then whatever judgment you make to fornicators, God will measure unto you. If you lie in God's name and you judge people that lie in God's name, then whatever judgment you make, God's going to measure up to you. That means don't be guilty of what you judge people in. Take heed lest ye fall. Many other times in the Bible, we're told to judge. To judge all the matters pertaining to this life. We're told that one day, we're going to judge angels. So why not more than should we judge the matters pertaining to this life? We shouldn't be cowards. I'm not saying go out there and kill sodomites. That's not our job. That's not our job. But we should advocate that the government do its job because its job is to fight evil. That's what the government's job is, to kill pedophiles, to kill rapists, to kill murderers, but instead the government lets them live. They have this idea of you can rehabilitate them. You do not rehabilitate somebody that has done a vile crime. There's no need to rehabilitate. You rehabilitate somebody that has done a menial crime. You know, they, they stole something. Then you rehabilitate them. You teach them not to steal. But if they murdered somebody, then the penalty for that murder is murder. You understand? Because dead people can't murder anymore. Dead people can't rape anymore. Dead people can't sodomize anymore. That's what the government's job is. That's what they should be doing. And that's what Christians should be out there preaching. But they're not. They're preaching to let, let sodomites be sodomites. That's a disgusting thing for a Christian to preach. Oh, tolerate. Let's just love them. It's a disgusting thing for a Christian to preach. Did Jesus tolerate the sodomites in Sodom and Gomorrah or did he burn them with fire? I think we all know what he did. Did he go in there and try to win their souls? No, he didn't. He burned them with fire and he later on said to the children of Israel that if he had tried to win their souls, they would have repented. But he didn't try because what they had done was worthy of death. So he gave them the death penalty. He didn't try to win their souls. He didn't try to get them right. He didn't try to rehabilitate them. You think, you think Jesus is okay with this filth? He's not. And Christians shouldn't be either. You advocate for it, you're weak. You're a coward. You ought to be standing up and preaching. That's the reason these sodomites are allowed to reign because Christians have justified them. And the Lord says, well, if you're going to justify them, then you can have them. And now you're finding out they don't justify us. They want us to let them live, but they don't want to let us live. That's why we're seeing this world. And if you think evil can defeat God, you don't understand God. 
The Lord could defeat these people in one day, but he has a rule for us. He says, if you want me to heal your, heal your land, first, you better, as a people, as my people, you better seek my face. You better turn from your wicked way. You better, you better in all your ways acknowledge the Lord. But they don't. They run around these little hippie weirdos. I just love everyone, like Joel Osteen with their 1960s free love hippie movement bullcrap. That's not Christianity. That's cowardianity. These weak, long-haired, feminine, pussy-footed cowards tiptoeing around like a kitty cat everywhere they go. Walking all light-footed because they're afraid they might prick their foot on a nail. Cowards. Gird up your loins like a man. Act like a man. Be a man. We don't, this, this war isn't won with swords. This war isn't won with staves or rocks or violence of any way. This war is won by the Lord's people turning to him and seeking his face and acknowledge him in all their ways in prayer and thanksgiving, turning away from all their false doctrines, all their lies, all their false gospels and work salvations, all the disgusting things they preach so they can get fat while they don't feed the children of the Lord. You think God's okay with the fact that his pastors and preachers, the saved men, can't even drink milk? They're all a bunch of cowards and babes. And they choke on milk. You listen to these people give a gospel presentation. Have you ever listen to them give a gospel presentation? You're sitting at the end of your seat wondering what they're going to say next. Because it sounds like every time they open their mouth, they're about to preach a work salvation. Oh, you need to turn from your sins. You need to, you need to do this. You need to do that. And then they hobble around what turn from your sins means. It means turn to Christ. And you're like, uh, uh. Man, your sins don't have nothing to do with salvation. Man, you don't even understand how to rightly divide the most basic division in the Bible. You're so busy trying to divide genealogies and, and stupid things, ages and dispensations and other bullcrap that you made up in your own heart, in your own mind, you can't even, even divide the only necessary division in the Bible. That which is spirit and that which is flesh. These weak Christians, these Judaizers, they think the the, the Israel is God's chosen people. They think God glories in any flesh. They don't understand anything. They're babies. They're, they're premature babies. But they think they're mature Christians. Mature enough to stand in the pulpit while they get fat off the tithes and offerings of men that they blinded with their lies. Wickedness. You know, the Old Testament is an example of Christianity today. The Lord elected his physically elected nation. Were they always for God or against God? They were always against God. They were always preaching lies. They were always prophesying their own hearts. Christians today are the same. They're the same. And God sends them prophets and he sends them preachers, and they shut up, and they won't do it. He sends them judges, he sends them Jeremiah's, he sends them Elijah's, he sends them Elisha's. He's telling them, get back to my word. Get right, but they won't do it. They're a bunch of cowards and babies. And then when they get up there and they try to preach hard against sin, they go up there and they preach a work salvation because they're not grounded in the milk. They're just a bunch of babes, premature babes. They can't even drink milk. Two drops of milk and they're choking. But they're out there preaching lessons on the meat like they understand anything. They have no understanding. 
You think I think I'm some elite Bible knowledge person? I'm not. I'm not. You know, I listen to the Bible hundreds of times. I, I had read the Bible, I don't know how many times, but I'm not an expert in the Bible. I know what the Bible says and that's it. And I believe what it says and I preach what it says and that's it. These people are just so, they have so little knowledge that it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. And they think God called them to be a preacher. God didn't call you. You called yourself. You're like the, you're like the prophets that, that Jeroboam set up. You know, Jeroboam set up prophets of anybody that would. You just bring your tithe, your cow, whatever, and, and you'd be a priest. That's what Jeroboam did. And these people think God called me. No, God did not call you. You're not even a novice. You're not even a novice. A novice at least has some knowledge. But you're standing in the pulpit preaching nothing but lies. You're not even a novice. You don't like what I have to say? Well, people didn't like, the people of Israel didn't like what Elijah had to say. They didn't like what Elisha had to say. They didn't like what Jeremiah had to say. They spent all their time trying to kill him. And when a Christian comes to you and they say, hey, why are you giving money to a woman so she can be a minister? There's no such thing as a woman minister. In the Bible, that's wickedness. That's the doctrines of Jezebel. Oh, well, anything that is about God is good. No, that's not true. You're lying. This is the reason we're in the state we're in. Christians are not Christians. They're just like the world. Let me give you a little litmus test. The Bible tells you a little litmus test. If everybody likes you, God hates you. You understand that? You are God's enemy. The Bible says, any man that be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. That means God's chosen his, his, his warriors and you're not one of his warriors, you're an enemy. You don't think a saved person can be an enemy of God? You're wrong. Most saved people are enemies of God. As evidenced by the world we're in today. Think about it. He says, if my people who were called by my name, okay, shall turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their lands. So look at the land. Is the land healed? No, it isn't. So what does that mean his people are doing? Wrong. It means his people are a bunch of cowards and they're not doing right and they're not turning from their wicked way. They merely think they are. They think they're just, but they're not. It's evidence. And, and when somebody gets up there and preaches hard and the world hates them, guess what? Christians hate them too. It's wickedness. You think I like being hated by everybody? My own family, my own blood relatives. Anybody who knows me hates my guts. And Jesus said, ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. All men, not most men, all men for my name's sake. If everybody likes you and you get along with everybody, you might not be being a good Christian. Look at Elijah. Did everybody like him? No, he's by himself. Look at Jeremiah. Did everybody like him? No, he's by himself. He wrote the book of Lamentation because he basically had nobody. He's by himself. 
Isaiah, did everybody love him? No. Ezekiel, did everybody love him? No. David, did everybody love him? No. David was one of the greatest kings ever. He loved his people. He loved his children. He did one thing that hit, that was wrong. In a, in, you know, he did a lot of wrong things, but I mean, one thing that was that caused God to 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 curse him, in that he took Bathsheba and he killed Uriah, her husband, after he had defiled her. He was hated by all men. People threw rocks at him and spit on him. His own son threw him out of his kingdom and slept with his, his, his own dad's concubines. The Christian road is a lonely road. But the Lord would heal our lands if we did right, just like he did for Elijah. One man stood and the Lord brought the rains back. One man stood and killed 400 prophets of Baal and the Lord brought the rains back. Now, we no longer have the Lord physically talking to us and he's no longer running our government in a sense that he was in Elijah's day. We no longer have him physically telling us to do things. So we can't just come up with what's in our own heart. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. But we can still slay our enemies, but not with the swords, physical swords, but with a spiritual sword. With a heart turned toward God. Doing what is right. Turning away from false doctrines. Lies like dispensationalism, Calvinism, pre-trib rapture, Zionism. All these lies that show that your heart is not for God, but for false doctrines and lies. That's why the world's in the state that it's in. If you don't believe so, you're wrong and you need to get right. And your own brain should be able to look at the world and say, our lands are not healed. So that means God's people are not doing right. So maybe this guy that nobody's ever heard of putting a video on YouTube, maybe he's right. Maybe I need to stop believing lies. Maybe I need to stop preaching lies. Maybe I need to stop being fat off the tithes and offerings of, of men that I've blinded. Maybe I need to stop pansy footing around issues. Maybe I need to stop justifying and abiding sick, vile sins. There are Christians letting sodomites in their church. Disgusting. Disgusting. You know, and they'll, the world will punish us. They'll hate us. I've been fired you know, recently, and people know about it, because I preached the Bible, because I read the book of Jude. I read the book of Jude, and that made me a racist, or whatever. Whatever in their mind I was, because I read the book of Jude. Man, I've been spit on, my family's been surrounded, I've been thrown out of churches that preach racist doctrines. For telling them that they are preaching lies in the Lord's name. But I'm right. I'm racist because I believe the Bible. No, whoever called me racist, they're racist. And I don't care if they were that race. Whatever race. They th if, if you hear someone preach against sin and you think they're talking about a race, you are a racist pig. You're a racist dog. You hear somebody talking about sin and you assume they're talking about black people or you assume they're talking about Hispanic people or you assume they're talking about Asian people or whatever. You're a racist dog. You, 
you're basically just believing that only those people do sin. And then you're calling me racist. It's disgusting the where the world's gotten. And, and a lot of these people called themselves Christians. They called themselves by the Lord's name. They said they believed in Jesus Christ. Liars and cowards. One day, I'm going to be standing in, a, in with the Lord. And you're going to be standing without, weeping with gnashing teeth. Wondering, wondering if the Lord's cast you aside. Losing all hope of your salvation. But the Lord will abide faithful. And that's your, that's your good news. If you're a saved Christian, the Lord will abide faithful. But let me tell you something. If you're abiding all this wickedness, if you're a coward in this, the tribulation is going to be a very, very, very difficult time for you. It's going to be hard for everybody, but it's going to be worse for you. These preachers, they want your money. So they, they teach you that you're not even going to go through tribulation. They tell you pleasing things. You need to read about Ahab. He had all these people around him that were telling him pleasing pleasing things oh go up to battle you're going to win for sure he had one real prophet one real prophet that said hey if you go to this battle you're going to die Ahab went and he died he didn't listen to that one man that one man went to prison for telling him the truth He wanted people to say pleasing things in his ears. That's just like Christians are today. Tell me smooth things. Tell me pleasing things. Tell me I'm not going to have to go through the tribulation. Tell me it's going to be easy. Feed my cowardice. And everybody's willing to do it. Just keep putting money in their offering plate and they'll keep blinding you with lies. It's wickedness. It's disgusting. And that's the reason the world is this way. You think evil is the reason the world is this way? No, the Lord could heal the land overnight. Overnight. That's how powerful the Lord is. Evil can't stand with him for a second. It's because his people are abiding evil. The Lord is allowing evil to abide. Stop abiding it and he'll stop allowing it to abide. He'll open up the windows of heaven. He'll pour out judgment on these wicked people and expose them for what they are and send them all back where they came from. Into their holes, into hiding. The Lord can heal this nation overnight, but it's not on, it's not on a war against the deep state or whatever weird religion you believe in and Trump isn't your savior he's not going to save you he never was let me tell you a little secret blue and red are two wings of the same dang bird two wings of the same dang eagle you might not like it but it's the truth it's the Lord's people that need to stand up it's the Lord's people that need to turn from wickedness. Preachers are out there trying to trying to turn you away, trying to turn you away from this wicked path, this you know pansy-footed approach to Christianity that you've taken, this long-haired hippie freak, effeminate cowardice approach to Christianity you've taken, and you hate them, and the world hates them, and they're hated of all men. Just like Elijah. Just like Jeremiah. And we just keep hoping that you'll, you'll understand and you'll realize 
and you'll get right so that the Lord will heal the land. But you just keep not doing it. I can accept being hated by the world. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. And sadly, I'm used to being hated by Christians too. But that's the worst part for sure. My brothers hate my guts because I tell them the truth. Just like Joseph's brothers hated his guts because he told them the truth. Because he delivered their evil report. There is light at the end of this. But the Lord's people have to turn to him. The Lord's people have to stop justifying wickedness. They have to stop justifying Jezebel's running churches. They have to stop justifying people who preach false gospels. They have to stop preaching lies in a pulpit for financial gain. The Lord can open up the windows of heaven and he could, he could shut down the evil forces tomorrow. Christians do not pick up guns. Do not pick up swords. Do not fight this with violence. You will not win. You will die. And you'll have done nothing. Fight this by turning your eyes and your heart to the Lord and turning your family's eyes and their heart to the Lord. And overnight, one man could teach two and two could teach four and four could teach eight and eight, 16 and 32 and 64 and 128, 256, 512. And it just keeps on going. We could be in the millions. And you know what the Lord would do? He would turn from his path. His path of judgment. He would turn from his path of judgment on this nation and on this world. He would heal our lands. And we wouldn't have to go through the tribulation that's coming yet. And we'd hold it off like in the days of Hezekiah when the Lord gave him 15 more years. We could hold it off. But you can't be a coward. You can't preach lies in the Lord's name. You have to get right. I'm out here. You can find me. You want to know where you're messing up? I'll show you in Scripture. It's not me. It's not of me. It's not of my lips. It's not of my mouth. It's not of my mind. Okay? I have always, my whole life, wanted to, wanted to be loved by everybody. I've always wanted everyone to like me. I've always wanted to be popular. It's not of me. Any good thing that ever comes out of my mouth is not of me. It is of necessity. My flesh doesn't want to do it. My flesh hates doing it. I hate being in these arguments. I hate being in these fights. I hate being hated by everybody. It is of necessity. Take a stand, Christians. Take a stand. And we can heal this land. If not, buckle up. It's about to get real bad.